Hi, I'm Craig Squire, and welcome to this week's Pause Devotion. Okay, we're reading in 1 Corinthians 1 to 7, Joshua 13 to 24, and Judges 1 to 2 this week. I'm going to talk about Joshua. Have you ever opened your Bible to your daily devotional looking for inspiration? and found your Bible filled, your reading filled with long lists of unpronounceable Hebrew names and places? If you've been reading this week's plan, that's exactly what you've encountered starting in Joshua 13. Let's read a small section. The allotment for the tribe of the people of Judah, according to their clans, reached southward to the boundary of Edom, to the wilderness of Zin at the farthest south. And their south boundary ran from the end of the Salt Sea, from the bay that faces southward, it goes southward to the ascent to Akrabim, passes along to Zin, and goes up south to Kadesh Barnea, along by Hezron, up to Adar, turns about it to Karka, passes along to Asman, goes out by the brook of Egypt, and comes to its end by the sea. And that's just the southern border. We've got the east, west, and north, and the other tribes. There are a lot of passages in the Old Testament with dimensions of temples, genealogies of tribes, and a long list of kings and people that we've never heard of. All right, let's be honest. Have you ever asked yourself, why did God put these chapters in the Bible and why is Pastor Tim making me read this? Let's think about this for a moment. In Joshua 13 to 17, God assigns land to each of the tribes of Israel with specific dimensions and boundaries. This land is pledged by God to real people with real cities and real locations. Each subsequent generation of Israelites saw this section of the Bible as vitally important to them for it documented their inheritance given to them by God. So whenever you come across a passage in the Old Testament with a long list of names, don't try to pronounce every single name correctly. Instead, take a step back, focus on the main point of the passage and where we are in the timeline of God's salvation history. Back in Genesis 12, hundreds of years before Joshua, God said to Abraham, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land I will show you and Abraham obeyed God. Hundreds of years later, after a few detours, Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt to the borders of the same land, described as a land flowing with milk and honey. After Moses, there was Joshua, who went in to spy out the land. Now Joshua is old, and the Israelites are about to possess the promised land, and that's where we are right now. So first, think about the setting and the context and what it led up to where we're reading now. For the Israelites, all of the history has led up to this crucial point, and the Israelites are on the cusp of finally realizing the inheritance that God has promised them hundreds of years earlier. Focus on the context and the history. Then think about what it meant to the Israelites at the time and what it meant to subsequent generations. So put yourself in their sandals. Imagine yourself standing on a hill overlooking the land. How do you feel? Excited? Scared? You've got God's deed of trust in your hand. Third, ask how it may apply to you. If God cared enough to detail the inheritance of each tribe of Israel, ask yourself, does God have an inheritance for me? Does he have a plan and a destiny for my life? Ask him. You may already have a promise that God has given you, and you've been holding on to it for a long time. Maybe it's the salvation of someone close to you. Maybe it's for a job, a house, or marriage or children. Maybe it's for healing. And just as the Israelites had to drive out people and occupy the promised land, there may be struggles ahead for you to gain the promise that God has given you. But here's the good news. It's found in Joshua 23, eight to 10. But you are to cling to the Lord your God as you have done to this day, for the Lord has driven out great and strong nations before you. And as for you, no one has stood before you to this day. For the Lord your God is he who fights for you, just as he promised. So no matter your struggles, God will fight for you. He will bring you to your inheritance and your destiny. And he will give you the desires of your heart. After all, he put them there. Be strong and courageous in him. Thank you for being here. You can find this and all the other Pause devotionals on our website. And don't forget to subscribe to our social media platforms. God bless you.